Okay, so we went through the development of fixed second law, and then we, in the next lecture, we talked about a particular solution of fixed second law. Now I want to do an example problem uh, just showing you how to apply that solution. Okay, so let me give you the problem as, it, as uh, it's it defined. Okay, so this is going to be an example. So the diffusion of carbon in alpha iron is defined by uh, using D naught equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second uh, and uh, an activation energy we'll call it Q sub D for diffusion activation equal to 87,400 uh, joules per mole okay so that's that's uh, that defines the physics of the problem we're gonna say that we're interested in a carbon environment uh, that's used to set a surface carbon content to one weight percent. Okay, so we're going to use a carbon content or a carbon environment, uh, which which we're going to use some sort of a hydrocarbon gas to control to set the surface concentration of a piece of uh, uh, alpha iron. Uh, to 1.0 weight percent okay and then we'll also say that the initial carbon content uh, in the steel is 0 0.2 weight percent okay and I'm gonna ask three questions here first I want to compute the diffusion coefficient of carbon in uh, uh, alpha iron at 900 degrees C okay and then part B at 900 degrees C, how many hours would it take to reach a carbon content of 0.6 weight percent at a distance one millimeter from the surface? And then finally, um, with with uh, using only the results from part B, I want to say what's the depth at which we have 0.6 weight percent carbon um, if we double whatever the time that we computed in B was? Okay. So using only the results from B, uh, we're going to compute the depth at which a 0 0.6 weight percent um, carbon content uh, is achieved if we double the time in B. Okay? So those are the three questions that we want to answer here. So now let's go ahead and write our solution. Okay, here's our solution, um, part A. So we, we take the um, Arrhenius form to compute the, the diffusion coefficient. So the diffusion coefficient is given as follows. D is equal to D naught E to the negative Q sub D over RT, right? We'll call that equation one. Uh, in this case, R is the gas constant uh, that's given as, uh, given by 8.31 uh, joules per mole degree Kelvin. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert the temperature that we care about, which was 900 degrees C, uh, into an absolute temperature. Okay. So we would say that T that T is equal to 900, right? plus uh, 273.15, right, uh, to give us 1173.15 Kelvin, right? So now all we need to do is substitute uh, the definitions of QD and D naught, which were given in the problem statement, in to compute this. Okay, and, and we end up uh, getting, so we have D is equal to... Um, 1.1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second, right, times E uh, to the negative 87,000 uh, uh, joules per mole divided by um, 8.31 joules per mole degree Kelvin times 1173.15 uh, Kelvin. 
right? And we end up with the quantity 1.404 uh, times 10 to the minus 10 um, meters squared per second. So that's the answer to part A. That's our diffusion coefficient. How about for part B? Right, part B wants to know um, uh, how, how long does it take to get a carbon concentration at a point weight, point 0.6 weight percent at a depth of one millimeter. So now we need to go back to the solution of Fick's law that we developed last class. So using the solution of Fick's second law uh, that we developed in class, right, which looked like C uh, at some position that we care about X minus C naught divided by CS minus C naught is equal to one minus the error function of X over uh, two times the square root of D times T. Okay, we'll call this equation two. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for the time, right? Okay, so we just got done computing D. The quantity X is given, right? That's one millimeter. So really, we just are trying to solve for T. So let's let's write down what we know about these quantities, right? So uh, from the problem statement, uh, right, we know that C of X must be equal to 0 0.6 weight percent. And I'm just dropping the units because it'll normalize out. Um, C naught is equal to 0 0.2 weight percent, and CS is equal to 1.0 weight percent, right? So we can compute the left-hand side. Uh, so I'll say CX now minus C naught over CS minus C naught is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2 divided by 1.0 divided minus 0 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.3 over 0 0.8, which is equal to 0 0.375 okay let's call this equation three so now i'm going to go ahead and substitute equation three into equation two okay and when i do that uh, i end up with 0 0.375 is equal to one minus the error function of x over two root dt right uh, which means that I can write this, I can subtract off 0.375 and add the error function, and I end up getting that the error function of x over 2 square root of dt uh, is equal to 0 0.625. Right? Hopefully that's straightforward. Let's call this equation 4. Okay, so now what do I need to do? Well, now I need to know what quantity eva does the error function evaluate to... 0.625. So in this case, I just need to take the inverse error function. Um, and if you're, if you're, uh, and I, I'm just going to use MATLAB to do it, but you could use a table if you wanted. Um, I'm going to, so my inverse error function is ERF inverse. You can use that in MATLAB, right? So you take the inverse error function of 0.625. Right, and you end up getting that x over 2 times the square root of dt must equal 0 0.6273. Okay, we'll call that equation 5. So now we just need to solve equation 5 for t, right? Okay, so that's our, that's our uh, goal. So solving equation 5 for t, I end up with the square root of dt is equal to uh, you can do it however you want. This is just how I typically do these, over 2.6273, right? Uh, which means that I can write that t is going to be equal to, I'm, I'm going to now uh, just bring this 1 over d term, uh, now times, which I squared everything, uh, times x over uh, 2 times 0 0.6273, the quantity squared, right? So I've just solved for T. Let's go ahead and call this equation six. So now I'm going to substitute uh, my, my X value in, right? X equals one millimeter, 
But remember, our units here on the diffusion coefficient are in meters, so I'm going to convert that to x equals 0 0.001 meters. We want that to all be consistent. Okay? And then I'm going to use my result from part A to, for D. So when I do that, I can then write that T is equal to 1 over the diffusion coefficient that I got, which was 1.404 times uh, 10 to the minus 10 meters squared per second, right? That's my diffusion, co uh, that's 1 over my diffusion coefficient, right? Times the quantity 0 0.001 meter uh, divided by 2 times 0 0.6273 the quantity squared, and if you punch that into your calculator, you see that that's 4,525 seconds, uh, which is going to be equal to 1.257 hours, which is the what we were asked. Okay, let's call that equation 7. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, that's how we can use that solution to compute uh, things like how deep the carbon atoms are penetrating into the surface of the steel. So now let's uh, move on to part C, right? And part C said, uh, suppose that I double this time, uh, what depth in my system now is at 0.6 weight percent, okay? Um, so I'm gonna do kind of what I did when I, when I gave the um, uh, solution itself. I'm gonna observe that because none of my concentration values change, the left-hand side doesn't change, okay? so observe that the left-hand side of equation 2 doesn't change, right, because our concentrations are the same, right, so it doesn't change for some fi for a fixed value of Cx, okay, so what that means is that we require the argument of the error function to be equal in part B, okay? So what's that argument look like? Well, that argument uh, is, is x over 2 times the square root of dt, right? But, uh, and, and what we're saying is that x1 and, and a t1 for time, that must be constant when I move to some new distance and diffusion coefficient doesn't change, we just extend the time, right? Something like this. So my two times the square root of d can cancel, and I'm left with that x1 over the square root of t1 is equal to x2 over the square root of t2, right? So I can go ahead and solve for x2 as equal to uh, x1 times the square root of t2 over t1, Right, which, what was x1? Uh, x1 was uh, was one millimeter, right? And whatever my time was, I just doubled it, so this ratio must be two, so it's uh, one millimeter times the square root of two, and so our, our depth in this case is just 1.414 millimeters after we've doubled the time. Call that equation uh, eight. Okay, so that's all there really is to using the solution that we developed for fixed second law. Uh, and, uh, and also, I just encourage you as you look through the problems, first look to see if we can use methods like part C so we don't even have to evaluate the error function. We can just make a statement about whether or not the concentrations are changing. And if they're not, then we can just hold the arguments constant and make these sort of simple uh, ratio type arguments. Okay?